Thank you. Good evening from Beijing and good morning and good afternoon to colleagues and friends in the Americans and Europe. I'm Yan Xiali, Senior Program Officer of AIMBA International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. Welcome to AIMBA webinar session, Accessing Bamboo, uh, uh, Accessing uh, Ecosystem Services from Bamboo Forests. Today, my colleagues, Mr. Chuen Tong Long, is with me to facilitate the webinar session. As we all know, bamboos are important species in the tropical and subtropical regions of the world, and they are widely distributed across Asia, the Pacific, Americans, and Africa, co covering an average of over 30 million hectares. Bamboo forests forest have been closely associated with human well-beings since time in Monroe's and provide a number of local and global value ecosystem services. However, statistics of the ecosystem service assessment are often poor, inconsistent, and based on the different definitions, assumptions, and methodologies in different countries, indicating that tools and a common methodological approach are missing Today's webinar will address those mentioning, provide a clear picture of how to access ecosystem services from bamboo forests, both in theoretical and practical way, and further pave ways on to how to integrate the current policy and ES market framework. Today, we have three presenters. After all the three presentations, we will have questions and answers sections. So my colleagues, Mr. Long, will facilitate the Q&A part. If you have any questions, please write your question in chat box. We will select and deliver the questions to our speakers. Due to the time limits, we apologize. We cannot answer all the questions during the session. However, we appreciate if you could fill in the fe uh, feedback form where you could put your questions. The feedback form can be accessed by the link provided in the chat box, just uh, right on your right side. And uh, this will enable us to reply you after the session. Now, I would like to move on to our first speaker, Dr. Himla Barrow. He is a scientist within the Forest and Environmental Program of CIFO. With background in sustainable forest management, Dr. Barra's current research interests focus on spatial assessment and mapping of ecosystem goods and services in forested land and production landscapes for large-scale planning and decision-making. Himla obtained his PhD from Melbourne School of Land and Environment at the University of Melbourne. Dr. Himla Barrow will introduce the framework for assessment of ES from bamboo forests. So Dr. Barrow, the floor is yours. Good evening. Uh, good morning and good afternoon in colleagues in the Americas and uh, and Europe. Can you hear me okay? Just checking. Good. Okay, that's good. Good. We are good. We are good. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, this, um, we already got uh, a background of uh, this webinar series. So I am going to talk about a framework for assessing ecosystem services from bamboo forest. This is this talk is mostly based on our recent working paper by uh, developed by INBAR and C4 Forestry and Agroforestry Program. Um, so we we developed a framework, and I will talk uh, mainly based on this. Uh, um, uh, this working paper and some additional ideas. Uh, my talk will briefly uh, will cover 
ब्रीफ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इको सिस्टम सर्विसेस और इको सिस्टम गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस फॉलोड बाय बैम्बो एंड बैम्बो फॉरेस्ट इको सिस्टम सर्विसेस फ्रॉम बैम्बो एंड द फ्रेमवर्क दैट वी आर प्रपोज वी प्रपोज फॉर एसेसमेंट ऑफ इको सिस्टम सर्विसेस फ्रॉम बैम्बो फॉरेस्ट एंड सम रियल ओल्ड एग्जाम्पल्स दैट वी टेस्टेड दिस दिस फ्रेमवर्क इन वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड सम पॉलिसी ऑप्शन टू इनहेंस इको सिस्टम services from bamboo forest and concluding comments it's uh, it's you may already know that ecosystem services are the direct and indirect contribution of ecosystem to human well being so this terminology is often um, interchanged with ecosystem goods and services not only the services but it also cover the goods uh, that we receive from ecosystem and as you can see there are several examples from from recreation to pollination services and soil retention and wood and some some, some direct goods as well as uh, as services so why do we care about ecosystem services i think this is uh, the most uh, most uh, widely used uh, Uh, framework that that demonstrate uh, by millennium ecosystem assessment uh, which uh, which uh, demonstrate the linkage between ecosystem services and human well being as you can see the ecosystem services are very, very much uh, interconnected with uh, constituent of human well being um, uh, the uh, the strength of the arrow like the the darker the arrow higher the strength and the thicker the arrow higher the strength and vice versa so as you can see most of the regulating and provisioning services provide uh, a lot of um, connection to human well being uh, in recent year the research and application of ecosystem service approach is increasing very rapidly uh, this is uh, this graphics uh, demonstrate the the trend of peer reviewed publications there are many more gray literature uh, policy documents uh, and other um, other informations but this these are the peer reviewed article as you can see how it is growing in the recent years so the reason of uh, uh, why people are interested on in ecosystem service assessment is the, the assessment helps to decision makers about allocating the uh, limited resources between competing uses it raises awareness uh, and conveys the relative importance of ecosystem services to policy makers and planner and decision makers and so on so now that's why um, there is a growing interest on research and application of ecosystem services approach bamboo forest as we heard in the introduction uh, Uh, earlier uh, my colleagues from inbar so this is the fastest grow growing grass species uh, which uh, is considered as a non timber forest product but it it will not provide um, less timber than many other tree species so it is it's it produce uh, um, a timber and non timber forest product although it is classified as a non timber and it's an integral part of the forestry in tropics and subtropics uh, Uh, in africa asia and the americas so it is widely spread throughout the forest um, outside of the forest as well farmlands river bank roadside and urban areas and the area of the bamboo is growing rapidly and it provides multiple goods and services from local to global communities however so far the ecosystem service assessment about bamboo is not very uniform and incons inconsistent because of the lack of appropriate and uniform framework to assess ecosystem goods and services from bamboo forest so if you see this graphics here this 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 represent the full utilization of bamboo resources as you can see the from the from the roots to the tip just all parts of the bamboo are used for various uh, uh, various daily lives from from food to energy and also environment conservation and recreation so this framework uh, is based on on the literature uh, review and analysis and the framework is 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 tested in in three parts of the 
three parts um, of the world, especially in Asia and Africa. So we we reviewed the uh, literature based on peer reviewed articles, uh, especially from uh, uh, from um, from Scoopers, Science Direct, Google Scholar, using variety of terminologies and method and assessment valuation frameworks. So we we compiled the literature. Uh, around uh, about the bamboo and also ecosystem and uh, environmental benefits. Those um, those uh, um, combined literature are used to assess and synthesize the value of ecosystem services in in various part of the various part of the world. So we also use uh, various um, approaches and tools uh, for for our assessment, such as participatory tools. Uh, uh, and and also um, other readily available uh, tools such as participatory mapping, seasonal calendar, focus group discussion to identify uh, the benefits of bamboo that provided to local community communities. Uh, there are a variety of tools. Uh, tools uh, are also reviewed. Uh, these are just these the table shows uh, an example of some some quite the, um, uh, widely used uh, approach and tools, models and tools uh, such as uh, toolkits for ecosystem service uh, assessment, uh, uh, invest like integrated valuation of ecosystem services and trade up. So these uh, these tools. Uh, provides um, qualitative and quantitative uh, assessment of ecosystem services. So the requirement of the data and the knowledge required uh, and the time for assessment are different uh, based on the uh, on the tools uh, as you use. And also the required level of details. If we are uh, looking to looking to assess the ecosystem services for payment mechanism, you need a greater accuracy. But if you only want to understand the value of ecosystem services, it's growing, uh, declining or increasing or what kind of services provided by this particular bamboo forest, we can use participatory approaches. So this is the main contribution of our um, our uh, work on on assessing uh, ecosystem services from bamboo forest. Uh, so this has a three key component. Uh, first is A, as you can see in uh, bamboo forest management and ecosystem goods and services from bamboo and approach of assessment. So the ecosystem services from bamboo or any type of land use depends on uh, our forest depends on the silviculture and management of the forest or um, uh, or the land use. Uh, if it, it also depends which part of the landscape uh, the bamboo forest uh, uh, is located, um, the how the forest is being managed, what is the purpose, what is the rotation like uh, harvest cycle, um, how the um, how we are managing um, uh, local communities and 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 so on. So if you manage the bamboo for uh, frequent harvesting for um, for goods and for for economic goods, it may provide certain ecosystem services higher, but other services may be lower. So depending on the silviculture and management, the provision of ecosystem goods and services may differ. So the second um, second uh, uh, section indicates the ecosystem services such as provisioning, regulating, habitat and cultural services. Uh, and the, finally, we can see there is a qualitative assessment and also quantitative assessment depending on on the data, the time and, and resources available. Uh, we can we can do either qualitative assessment or quantitative assessment. So this framework provides you an uniform assessment of uh, ecosystem services from bamboo forest. So when we use this framework and reviewed uh, based on our reviewed literature, we found that bamboo uh, actually provides all categories of ecosystem services such as provisioning services. So it provides food, it provides forage, timber, raw materials and so on. It also provides uh, uh, regulating services such as landscape restoration, sediment retention, carbon, uh, 
uh, habitat quality and so on and also it, it also provide cultural such services such as landscape beauty uh, recreation and in, in many parts also cultural and uh, value so this is uh, this table i'm sorry about the the, the text uh, it's a bit small so the uh, messy messy table very busy table so it, it provides um, a, a snapshot of qualitative uh, comparison of ecosystem services from bamboo forest in relation to natural forest planted forest uh, grassland uh, agricultural land so as you can see that the that um, the heads indicates higher and yell indicates lower but this is this is again the the qualitative comparison uh, based on expert assessment so uh, in many cases as you can see the bamboo forest provides uh, higher um, the ecosystem service provision uh, from from various land use so i will uh, explain this in um, uh, in in the next slide uh, from uh, from the particular assessment in, in in various part of the landscapes so we tested this framework in in in, in various part of the world so especially in the himalayas in nepal uh, uh, in in tropics in uh, in indonesia and also in africa in um, in, in in ethiopia so three three contrasting landscapes uh, to see how the framework uh, um, uh, works on uh, or um, uh, demonstrate the, the the value of ecosystem services assessment so due to uh, due to limited time um, i can't go in in in, in detail but this uh, this graphics uh, shows uh, you um, the relative um, uh, relative uh, value of ecosystem services the first one uh, the is uh, is shows uh, ecosystem services from bamboo so here is a graphics so p indicates provision food food supply raw material fresh water provision we we only quantified the major ecosystem services that frequently used in ecosystem service assessment the same framework applied in three continents uh, th uh, three three different uh, landscapes two continents actually asia and africa and bamboo and natural forest and mixed uh, species plantation forest so as you can see that ecosystem system services from mixed plant, from bamboo are much higher uh, compared to mixed species plantation forest and more or less comparable to natural forest so this is actually the bamboo forest was established for flood protection so one particular uh, purpose in, uh, in in central nepal but after 10 years of, um, of a plantation the bamboo become bamboo forest become a dense bamboo forest and provided so many uh, ecosystem services um, uh, which were not initially planned by the uh, by the local communities and and government agencies who established those forests the so another example in um, in mount uh, batur in bali in indonesia so we compared uh, our colleagues actually compared a uh, bamboo with planted forest and as you can see and um, the first graphic shows uh, about ecosystem services from from bamboo and the next one services from uh, from planted forest so as you can see the ecosystem services are much higher uh, most of the ecosystem services are higher from from bamboo compared to planted uh, forest so uh, um uh, further details is available in our uh, our working paper uh, c4 in bar working paper actually open access uh, publications uh, which we will provide you link after this um, this session so similarly we tested this framework in ethiopia uh, where bamboo was uh, bamboo forest was compared with native woodland and mixed plantation mixed species plantation forest and as you can see the completely different picture of uh, uh, ecosystem services and many of the ecosystem services from bamboo are uh, much higher than native woodland so further detail and further details about the case um, and these uh, particular services are available uh, in the um, in the working paper 
So there are some policy options that can enhance the provision of ecosystem services. As I mentioned uh, in our framework, the way you, you manage the bamboo forest and, and, and location in the landscape the, of bamboo forest um, depends um, and, and also management. Uh, provides a number of ecosystem services. Sometimes it enhances uh, multiple ecosystem services, and sometimes uh, there will be trade off uh, uh, of multiple ecosystem services. So trade off in, uh, means uh, one ecosystem service is in, in increased, uh, which compromises the other ecosystem services. Um, and then also, sometimes we can also identify the social value and recognition using participatory approaches. And other times we can use the total economic valuation approach. So all ecosystem services are counted and valued uh, using readily available valuation tools. And also payments from ecosystem services may enhance the provision of ecosystem services. If there is a market of ecosystem services, um, the people will um, Will, will manage their forest for multiple uh, ecosystem services. Uh, similarly, regulatory mechanism and also requirement of protection of a high carbon stock and high conservation value forest within or around the bamboo forest may uh, impact on various ecosystem services. For example, integrating remnant vegetation around uh, bamboo May may help to move the wildlife wild species uh, wildlife species from move from bamboo to to the native vegetation and vice versa. So some of the key messages from our uh, from our um, uh, working paper and 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 these talks are rapidly increasing bamboo forests provide wide range of ecosystem services to society and the environment. And ecosystem service assessment doesn't always require enormous data, tool, and sophisticated models. People think about ecosystem service assessment is a very, very complex um, undertaking. So it requires a lot of data, tools, and uh, it's complicated. It's not, it's, it's not always correct. Participatory approaches can be applied to understand the ecosystem service trend and local priority that gives planner and policymakers. Uh, a good insight of ecosystem services from particular uh, particular forest and and also landscapes and policy instruments play important role to encourage landowners uh, to enhance the ecosystem services from from bamboo forest so that's all uh, my presentation thank you very much for listening and our framework is uh, is available uh, um, uh, online in in Sipor and in Bar website, and we also have very interesting forest news article about this framework um, in in Sipor and in in Bar website. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Dr. Hamla Farah. So from uh, the presentation, we know the assessment of uh, ecosystem service of bamboo forest is not always uh, complicated and uh, it um, do not require humorous uh, um, data or tools. And we also go to know uh, bamboo can provide uh, the huge uh, um, ecosystem services in certain uh, countries and it's more or less can compare with other uh, forest type or land uses. So um, now we move to the next speaker, uh, Professor Juan Carlos Camigo from uh, 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 Technological uh, University of uh, Parallel, uh, uh, Colombia. Uh, Professor uh, Camigo is also a faculty of environmental science and the leader of the research group on management of tropical agri-ecosystems. Professor Camigo has just recently Camigo. conducted an uh, assessment of ecosystem services from bamboo-dominated forests in coffee region in Colombia. So, Professor Camigo, over to you. Yes. Thank you, Jensia, and thank you, Lont. Okay, first of all, 
I would like to say thanks to Imbar and to the organizer of the event, and a special thanks also to people connected right now to the panel. Okay, my presentation is related to a case of a study where we have a chance to assess ecosystem service from bamboo forests in the coffee region of Colombia. If you want to know details about the, this study, you will be able to see the working paper number 84 that I hope will be released by Imbar in the coming days. Okay, the coffee region of Colombia is located in the central area of our country. And on the mountains and there, it is a very important area because in this area was produced the coffee that support the economy in Colombia during several years. However, more or less 30 years ago, when the coffee price dropped at the global market and coffee farmers started to have some problems with their incomes and also related with some coffee disease, they started to change coffee plantation to other land uses, especially to pastures, but also to fruits that, like pineapple or citric plantations. In some cases, we have some problems associated with this. You can see here in these images, but also we have some alternative like silvopastoral systems. OK, the landscape changed. And now we have more postures than coffee plantation, but the forests are almost the same. These forests are important because are dominated by the bamboo species Wado angustifolia, and also because fulfilled with different and important ecological functions. They provide habitat for biodiversity to birds, to plants, to mammals, and to other kind of organisms also are important because contribute with water regulation and soil protections and have a high capacity for carbon storing. That means that represent an important solution for climate regulation and of course provide raw material for domestic and commercial uses. So it is very important because it could be a good complement for farmers and their incomes. In fact, we can see that bamboo forests provide ecosystem service, but the challenge is how can we access this ecosystem service? So let me show the next, next slide. Here we have different factors affecting the assessment of ecosystem service. The first to consider is the biophysical structure of our process because this provides the basis of ecological functions, and ecological functions create the capacity of providing ecosystem service. And here there is something important because there is only a service if humans receive the benefit. And if we have a benefit, we can give a value. But not always we receive the benefit, but in natural conditions, we have ecological functions. Okay. When we try to assess ecosystem service, we try to find indicators in order to describe biophysical structure, function or service. We try to simplify this condition and also we can evaluate the perception of, of people about the benefits. In our study, we focus on both approach. The first, trying to find indicators to describe the capacity of land uses to provide ecosystem service and the second to evaluating the perception of rural and rural people about the ecosystem service. For this presentation, I will focus on the first approach. OK, we have different challenges to face in our study. The first was the data and the av availability of these data or information. So we have to find strategies to get information because usually the costs associated to collect information are higher. 
And if we are working with a small farmer, it is no good idea if we increase the cost of collecting information. The second challenge and related also with the third and the fourth is the methods. So we, we have in fact a framework and we can have concepts, but we have to develop according to the availability of data or information some methods in order to provide a proper information related to ecosystem service. Then if we have data, we can create indicators, but you know, indicators or variables are not at the same unit, at the same scale, and have different magnitudes. So we have to work in order to find strategies to put together at the same scale or at the same way to compare between land uses. And finally, if we receive information from site with different biophysical conditions, it is important because we have to compare different capacities of providing ecosystem service. So we have to find strategies in order to avoid some bias in these situations. For that, we choose uh, three sites located in the coffee region. We cover this area. The first site that we call case one is located in Pereira, my city, where is located my university. The second located at north of the coffee region in Belén de Umbria, and the third located at south of the coffee region in Bucala Grande. These three cases provide information and comparable indicators that we, we could use in order to provide good information for assessing ecosystem service. In the first case, we, we have a uh, wadua forest, we have pineapple plantation, we have a uh, pastures and silvopastoral system, and of course, uh, we have a wadua. In the second case, located in Belén de Umbria, we have coffee from monocropping to agroforestry system, but also we have fragments of wadua forest and natural forest. And for the tier case, it will focus on silvopastoral system, but we have also guadua bamboo forest, natural forest, and pasture without trees. But there is something important here because we have different biophysical conditions, and that means maybe different possibilities of providing ecosystem service. We start here with about 900 meters above the sea level, and we go up to almost 2,000 meters above the sea level. We have different relief. Here we have a flat relief, here we have a steep relief, and here we have a hillside relief. We have different climate conditions, we have a humid areas, and we have a drier areas. So this condition represents probably changes and a challenge, of course, to demonstrate how ecosystem service can be provided from these sites. We check the data availability. We defined six services that we can assess. The first, nutrient cycling. We choose also soil protections, water regulation, climate regulation, and habitat provisioning. For each one, we select indicator to describe in a proper way the service. In this case, we use Variables related with nutrient cycling, like soil organic matter, we calculate soil, soil fertility from eight chemical parameters. From soil protection, we use variables associated with soil structure that represent the resistance of soils to erosions. And we also use indicators related to physical uh, soil degradation. For water regulation, we use the total porosity and properties related with the capacity of soils to retain water. We also measure soil bed density that represent the possibilities of movements of air or, and water in soils. And for climate regulation, we use the carbon content in the different uh, source, below ground, above ground, and the total ecosystem carbon. And finally, we use an integrated biodiversity index created in a previous project for off of 
or all of the land uses use it in in this world okay and one of the more important things of of our work was try to develop a way for making analysis of the, the data so we divide this process in two phases the first we call the univariate phase and the second the multivariate phase so in the first state of this univariate phase we compare land uses for each case using the original values of indicators and the second step we rescale the values of each indicator to the range from zero to one that means that we put together in the same scale in fact it was one of the challenges right in order to be able to compare ecosystem service between land uses in the second phase we use the old data set that means data from case one case two and case three and we perform a principal components analysis and here it was important in order to obtain groups of variables or indicators related with land uses and ecosystem service of course and finally we perform a cluster analysis in order to find groups of land uses that represent in similarities in terms of ecosystem service okay the first results associated with this step from here for the step one we have patterns of associating between land uses with high or low values indicators describing ecosystem service within the case and then we obtain integrated qualification of ecosystem service um, for land uses on each case and here we can have a chance to see in some cases possibilities of trading off between land uses for ecosystem service in terms of application this phase will be useful if we are working for example a level of farm or farming system because we are working within a case or sites and it is useful to see the contribution of each land use to ecosystem service in the multivariate phase in the first state we have the relationship between ecosystem service land uses a contribution of indicators and how is land use is contributing to the definition of ecosystem service and finally when we perform the cluster analysis we obtain groups of land uses representing their capacity of ecosystem service provisioning okay it was a very long process so it is not easy to show you everything that i analyze here so i want to start from the second set of results and because it is a good way to see the result of our study this is correspond to the the first case of the study and here we have we can see how are integrated in this uh, graphic uh, the six ecosystem service assessed and here we have the indicators selected and with the lines with different colors associated with land uses we can see how is the contribution of each land use to the definition of um, ecosystem service and there is something interesting here because not always the land uses contribute at the same at the same level to ecosystem service it is good because we can have here some trading off that this is interesting when we are working a level for example of a part so if we have the higher area uh, if we join the points of each line we will see the total contribution of land use to the ecosystem service in this case we separate bamboo that it was the land use with higher contribution to ecosystem service and we separate pineapple plantation that it was the lower uh, land use the the the, the use the land use that had the lower contributions to, to 
ecosystem service. And we can see here that if we join the, the points between each indicator, we have a polygon that with one area that represent the contribution of this land use to the ecosystem service. And in this area, maybe where pineapple has the higher values could be a trade-off trade or compensation of this land use to this. And also, if we have this area that is not covered by pineapple, it is the trade-off of bamboo to this land use. But it is not also good because if sometimes we have a low values always of one land use, we can detect negative effect, but maybe it is good because we, we can make decisions about the management within a farm. Okay, and we have the same for the second case where natural forests and bamboo uh, were the higher values and maybe monocropping the lower values. And in the third case, we have a good results also because uh, here we have a good condition of soils and also a all of the land uses contribute more or less the same to ecosystem service. That means that the approach was useful in order to show how a farm could be also in balance in, in terms of the contribution of land uses to ecosystem service. OK, when we have the multivariate analysis and we see the principal components, we can uh, we could find two components representing almost 70% of the total variability. It is good because with only two components, we are describing a high variability of the old uh, data set. So here we can see association between components and ecosystem service. In this area where are located more of the variables we can see that uh, more of the variables here are associated with soil protection, in this case with biodiversity, with carbon, and here with water regulation or indicator of water regulation. But here we can see low values for some indicator related in this case with soil degradation. And when we put also land uses here, we can associate land uses with this um, values of uh, indicators related with ecosystem service. So we can see here that coffee are important, for example, for water regulation, but also bamboo could be, and forest could be the high importance, but also bamboo and forest have important for carbon and soil protection. And we can see that maybe the contributions to land use uh, to ecosystem service could follow these directions when we have the higher contribution and we have the higher contributions. And if we follow this direction and we put in this uh, scan that maybe we can interpret a, in this corner, maybe we will find the lower and the worst values and the low contribution. For, for example, in our study was a pineapple plantation. Here, the average condition for contributing to ecosystem service and here the higher uh, and if we go to here it is interesting because we can see here bamboo and natural forest so we can say that bamboo and natural forest maybe are are the land uses that contribute more with ecosystem service okay when we perform the cluster analysis. We identify groups very similar in terms of ecosystem service. Are we could able to confirm our results? And we find that bamboo and natural forest are uh, together with silvopastoral system. And we also find uh, found that uh, pineapple maybe was the land use with uh, lower capacity to provide ecosystem service. OK. For, from this part of our study, we have uh, four conclusions. The first is uh, bamboo has a high capacity of providing ecosystem service. We can demonstrate it, and especially of regulating and provisioning of habitat. 
But if we consider also the possibilities uh, to domestic and commercial uses, uh, we can increase the possibility of ecosystem service because we will receive provisioning ecosystem service and it is important as a complement for farmers. Also, when we assess land uses, we can see that natural and forests and bamboo forests are uh, the better in terms of the values for ecosystem service and some land uses close to them like agroforestry also have good conditions but those um, land uses with a simple arrangement and high uniformity maybe have no high values and I uh, weekly uh, possibilities of provision uh, ecosystem service so it is good in terms of it because we can find some trade off, but it is not always good because, as I mentioned before, it, it could be uh, important if we consider that one land use is creating a negative um, condition. So, but it is useful because we can detect what of the land use is creating this condition and maybe we can make decision about the management. Finally, um, in terms of the methods, rescaling variables was good in order to see the contribution of each ecosystem service. In this case, a level of far, a level of each case, it is good if we can apply this approach when we are working at level of far. And in the other hand, uh, the multivariate analysis contribute well uh, at level of landscape. We, we could find patterns that permit us to know about the contribution of ecosystem of land uses to definition of ecosystem service. Okay, uh, that is all. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you have questions or comments later, I will be able to answer you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Kamigo. Uh, uh, I think Professor Kamigo's presentation touches the um, point uh, and gives the uh, detailed examples how to use the framework and to set up the indicators to evaluate the important uh, ecosystem services of uh, bamboo uh, forest. Um, and uh, it also um, give us very good examples and uh, detailed ex explanations with the three case cases that uh, within uh, different uh, biophysical uh, conditions. And from the presentation, we know the, uh, the, the assessment of ecosystem services of bamboo forest can also uh, imply a better land use planning to avoid uh, negative trade-offs. Thank you, Professor uh, Kamigo. Um, now I would like to invite our final presenter today, Mr. Nayong Kan Lam. Mr. Lam is the Director of uh, Forest Protection and Development Fund in Nian'an Province, Vietnam. He holds Bachelor of uh, Forestry on Forest uh, Resources Management from Vietnam Forestry University and the master degrees of environmental uh, management and development from the Australian National University. Mr. Lam operates the payment for uh, forest ecosystem services in Nian'an province, Vietnam. So he's uh, very experienced on this. Let's welcome Mr. Lam, introduce how the PS system works in Vietnam. Uh, let me unmute. Uh, unmute. Uh, Thank you, Zansia. Okay. Good evening from Vietnam. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. So the voice. Okay. Okay. So now I'm trying to share my presentation. Let's see, right? Uh, okay. So o open your presentation. I will share it. Okay, can you see it now? I open already. Mr. Long, can you see it? 
Hello? Hello? I cannot hear the boy. I didn't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please start. Okay, okay, okay. So I start now. Sorry. Okay, uh, now I will present about the payment for forest environment and services in Vietnam. Uh, first, is the content of my presentation. My presentation will be a brief introduction about forest status and uh, PFAS in Vietnam. After that, we move to the uh, objectives and stakeholders of PFAS in Vietnam. I also tell you about the users, some main users of forest environment and services. Uh, before I go to the financial mechanism in PFAS, and then I show you some initial achievements of PFAS implementation in Vietnam and difficulties and challenges. Finally, I like to tell you about the conclusion and recommendation. Okay, so now some short introduction about forest status. According to VNGSO, up to 2019, the total forest areas in Vietnam is uh, more than, sorry, <laughs> is more than 14,491,000 hectares, of which two thirds are natural forest. The remainder of more than 4,236,000 hectares plantation. As a result, the forest coverage of the country up to 2019 is about 41.7%. I guess now I'm telling you some about the evolution of PFAS in Vietnam. We will start with uh, the year 2004. In 2004, the concept of PES was drawn by the government of Vietnam, led the foundation for the national program of payment for forest environment and services. So this sets out in the law of forest protection and development in 2004, but PFAS is not in place yet at that year. We have to wait more for more four four year more up to 2008. The government promulgated the decree number 05, and the prime minister promulgated the decision number this is the wrong number <laughs> this one the, the number uh, 380 that established the condition to support PFAS pilot projects in Lamdong and Shenla province, two provinces, one in the south, Lamdong, and one in the north, Shenla. Okay, so now I'll tell you about the next year in 2010. The government now promulgated the decree of number 99. This one, is a very important one. This one mandates the implementation of PFAS nationwide from the 1st January 2011. So Vietnam became the first country in Asia to initiate the nationwide PFAS scheme. But this one in implementation have some difficulties. So the, we have some revising and supplementing uh, some article of degree number 99 uh, during 2015 but up to 2017 the national assembly approved the new forestry law this replaced the old forest protection and development law in 2004 and this law regulates the pfas and FPDF, that the Forest Protection and Development Fund in the laws. So it's regulated by law from now. And in the next year, the government also promulgated the decree 156. This one is guiding 
the forestry law 2017 but it focused very much many articles talking about PFAS so PFAS become very important now in Vietnam okay so now we move to the next one we talk about the objectives of the of PFAS in general PFAS contribute to sustainable development in Vietnam now in economic aspect is mobilizing social resource increasing the values of forest sectors and contributing to GDP growth in the social aspect is help to build the capacity and rising awareness of environment and protection and forest conservation and it created uh, uh, creating jobs and incomes and improving livelihood, uh, especially for the people living in mountainous region, and most of them are ethnic minorities. In the environmental aspect, it helps to protect the forest and plant forests, and it also contributes to the forest sustainable management and the biodiversity biodiversity conservation that's very brief about the uh, objective of uh, PFAS in Vietnam and now I'd like to move our attention to the stakeholders main stakeholders of uh, uh, PFAS in Vietnam we have forest owner we have forest environment and services users we have a PDF that's a uh forest protection and development funds like our organization we also have the forest management agency this uh, four main stakeholders in the process of implementation of pfas in vietnam but the most important is the forest owner they provide the forest environment and services in vietnam we call environment and services we do not call ecosystem services because ecosystem services is a wire including timber and non-timber forest product and things but this we all only talk about the habitats and and, and, and some uh, yeah, other environment and aspect okay then the second one is the users the service user so like a hydropower scheme they use water regulated from the forest now, like uh, clean water production uh, companies, they use uh, water also, and some factories, uh, they uh, emit the carbon uh, dioxide uh, sequestered by the forest. So, this between these two stakeholders, they can have direct payment. So, they sell the service to the users and the user will pay back the money here but this very few in Vietnam now almost payment now a PFAT now is indirect payment so it go through the FPDF system like this so we call indirect payment in the law and it's when all of these processes is managed controlled and monitored by the forest uh, management agency Okay, so now we move next. So in Vietnam, as I mentioned, is uh, regulated uh, by law that the PFAS can be direct or indirect transaction. So PFAS money can be paid directly from PFAS user to provider or indirectly via forest FPDFs. But mainly way now in Vietnam is indirect payment. So VN FFs FPDF system. BNFF is the Forest Protection and Development Fund at the central level. So now we talk about BNFFs and provincial uh, fund for uh, forest protection and development. This is the slogan of uh, our organization, Vietnam's Green Future. Now we, uh, we move forward uh, to uh, the uh, uh, charge of uh, organizational structure of uh, VNFF. So at the central level, we have a VNFF here and it have three main components. 
it have management units as a central, it have control units here, and it have board directors, as sometimes we call steering committee. The member of steering committee come from MART, that the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. It come from VN Forest, that the Randall Department of Forest Administration. Beside the VNFF at the central level, we have a provincial uh, FPDF here. We have many of them. Uh, there are 44 now. And under that also have many projects relating and uh, uh, other uh, uh, programs. So uh, how about the users of, uh, uh, of forest environment and services? We uh have five groups of forest environment and services users uh regulated by law the first one we talk about is the hydropower factory this one they use the water regulated by the forest so have they have to pay 36 dong per kilowatt hours of commodity electricity to the forest owner as a second one is clean water production company, they have to pay about 52 Vietnamese dong per cubic meter of commodity water. Uh, how to imagine this uh, in US dollar for easier for you to uh, 36 Vietnamese dong, we, uh, one US dollar uh, is uh, equivalent to about 23,000 Vietnamese dong. Uh, see, okay, sorry. And uh, so you can imagine the number that the forest uh, environment and services user have to pay. Uh, for the tourism services agency, they have to pay around one to two percent of anyone revenue generated. Other two kinds of uh, users, now we are waiting for further regulation. Uh, so it's not uh, in reality, yes. Uh, so now uh, I'd like to move to the financial uh, mechanism in uh, uh, PFAS payment. The financial mechanism is uh, can be uh, two ways. First, the forest users, for example, from hydropower and clean water and uh, tourism company, they pay the money via VNFF at the central level, as I mentioned. Uh, earlier that and then after deduction and which hold max five percent for management this money transfer to the provincial FPDFs this at the provincial level and this one is at the central level and after this that will pay to the forest owner the second way is uh, uh, the second way is come from directly from the forest uh, PFAS users via provincial uh, FPDFs and then up to deduct 10% for management and 5% for contingency, the remaining money will pay back to the forest owner. Uh, you should remember that uh, the FPDF system can only use 10% max of uh, management cost, 5% of contingency later on have to pay back to the forest owner in some case uh, regulated by laws. Okay, so uh, now we can view another graphs uh, to, uh, it's easier for you to imagine the, the way the money uh, transfer from the forest environment and uh, services user to uh, FPDF system and then to the forest owner. So it can go via VNF apps at the central level and then go to the provincial level this way or can go directly this way. And then it go to forest owner here. Uh, and forest owner can be in two groups, uh, two kind. One is organizational like a forest enterprise uh, and other like a private households, individual. Okay. So now we talk about the 
uh, some initial uh, achievement of uh, uh, PFAS in Vietnam. Achievement will be about the organizational establishment, uh, will be about the uh, partner networking, will be about the level advising, about the entrusted contracts for money, and about funding for projects, and about uh, social and economic enhancements. Okay, I move uh, quite quick uh, about this one. So first, about the establishment of FPDF system. Up to 2019, there are 44 provincial FPDF were established nat uh, nationwide. You see from the central here, we in Hanoi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we have uh, the... Uh, Sorry, right, it's uh, lack. In Hanoi here, we have the central level VNF apps and have many provincial ones down here. Okay, so this uh, system of uh, FTDF already advised to develop and promulgate many legal documents. I list here, many of them here, you can see on the screen. Uh, from important one lies the laws, new law of forest uh, in uh, 2017 and many decrees of the governments and also some circulars of the ministries and relating ministry and also other documents. Uh, now we talk about the partner networking. Uh, the FPDF system have been establishing a system, a network of partner uh, both nationally and uh, internationally. And this system helped very much in the uh, implementation and monitoring and evaluation of the uh, PFAS uh, program in Vietnam. Uh, next, about the signing in trusted contracts for PFAS. This is very important. So we have to sign the in trusted contracts between, because indirect payment, so uh, between the uh, forest uh, owner and the uh, forest environment and services user cannot sign the contract uh, directly. So they sign uh, with the FPDF system. So up to May 2020, from central to provincial level, there are more than 877 PFAS entrusted contracts uh, have been signed, of which uh, 94 contracts were uh, signed by VNFF at the central level, and many of them remain. Uh, more than 783 contracts uh, were signed by a provincial FPDF system. Also, I'd like to talk about the revenue of PFAS money. This is very important <laughs> for uh, forest owner. So, uh, the money payment mainly in Vietnamese dong. Uh, it's only only in Vietnamese dong. But for uh, you easier uh, to uh, uh, imagine, I uh, calculated uh, equivalent to the US dollar with one euro dollar uh, equivalent to uh, about 23 million uh, thousand Vietnamese dong. So the revenue of PFAS increasingly from the year of uh, 2011. This is the first year of implementation uh, nationwide program of PFAS. Uh, to uh, its go three times in the year of 2013, and it increased again in uh, uh, 2015 and 2017, and up to 2019. The total revenues of uh, PFAS in Vietnam now is nearly 122 million uh, US dollar. This number may be uh, not very big in some country, but in Vietnam is very big and it varies uh, fruitful for forest protection and de development. Okay, so in terms of uh, forest area protectors, in terms of the number of households participating and benefiting from PFAS, and uh, also income of uh, household also increase uh, from year to years. So uh, 
I wrote on here, but I don't have much time to show you. But uh, for example, the area of forest uh, protected under PFAS in uh, 2013 is about 4.1 million hectares out of the total 13.8 uh, million hectares of the whole country. But in uh, 2017, the total areas increased up to 5. Point uh, nearly 6 million hectares and expectedly it will be more than uh, 6 million hectares of forest will be protected under PFAS money in 2020. Number of house, uh, households uh, participating and benefiting from PFAS also, it uh, go double from uh, 2011 to 2013. Uh, uh, 13. So more than uh, 113 uh, thousand household to 236,000 household participated. And this number reached more than 400,000 households in 2017. And uh, we hope it will remain in the coming years. OK, so uh, now we can talk about the difficulty and challenges, uh, not only achievement, but also many difficulty and uh, Challenges. PFAT revenue um, now mainly depend on the ES of water regulation and reservoir protection. So mainly payment from uh, hydropower scheme and and, and uh, uh, clean water production uh, companies. Other service, uh, services like landscape beauty and carbon sequestration, uh, etc., are difficult to identify the main ES provider. So it's uh, it's law now, but uh, in the reality, we are doing the pilots. Uh, second, some areas are at a relatively low ES payment level. Uh, sometimes it's even not enough for uh, management or transaction cost, and forest owner uh, are not happy. Uh, and sometimes we also use uh, subsidy uh, for them uh, because the payment level of PFAS is too low in some areas. The data for its type, quality, and quantity are backwards. Uh, now it's better, but uh, at the beginning of the program, it's very backwards. So it takes time and costly to make them up to date. Uh, we, we need uh, very up to date and uh, uh, transparent uh, uh, data for us. Otherwise, we cannot uh, have a good payment. We also lack of a comprehensive uh, ME system. So it's hard to prove the linkage between PFAS and ecosystem or social and economic quality. This is very important. So uh, we are talking now about PFAS very uh, positively in Vietnam and even uh, also some uh, um, uh, many uh, uh, organization, international organization also assess this very good uh, program, but we need a clear uh, proof uh, for this linkage. Currently, we use the K factors. The, so the K factor developed for equity payment, but now it's not well conducted in reality because the study of these two scientific and then we apply in the reality is very difficult. Uh, finally, the ES payment is mostly by cash handling now. So this may lead to unsafe and it's have less transparency, uh, transparency sometimes. So uh, now we go to the conclusion and recommendation. First, PFAS is a good policy ever seen in Vietnam for forest protection and development. Also, the current PFAS look like, or some organizations say that the PFAS in Vietnam look like statelet but it's still a good start. So this is a very good foundation for better forest protection. Yeah. According to my point of view. So we need more specific study and guideline uh, to in order to pay other ES, uh, other ecosystem services for forest owner. Because some, uh, at the moment, uh, the, the payment of uh, PFAS still uh, 
I think it's not not reach the real value of uh, forest services. Uh, the next one is specific forest status and uh, social and economic data should be made uh, available prior to, uh, to the PFAS implementation because it's very necessary for building the monitoring and evaluation uh, system for PFAS as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide. PFAS mechanism must be based on this uh, study, of course, but do not make it too scientific. Some study look very good on paper, but when we apply in the reality, it's very, very difficult because many uh, equ e e e e <laughs> equation and very difficult to get the input data for that. Finally, the ePay and Poston Pay might be a suitable solution for PFAT payment in order to reduce the cash handling. So now we are trying to increase the, uh, the level of payment of uh, uh, we call uh, not cash handling uh, to uh, in increase uh, the uh, safe and also the transparency of the payment. That's the end of my presentation today. Thank you very much for the attention and uh, I'm uh, looking for some of the uh, uh, ideas and uh, comments and uh, questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lam. Uh, from uh, a, a very good presentation, and uh, I think the uh, system of uh, payment for the eco uh, forest ecosystem service in Vietnam that uh, links uh, uh, the uh, and build the uh, networking of uh, multiple stakeholders that consists of. Uh, forest owners, private sectors, and uh, forest protection and the development of funds, and uh, forest, uh, forestry uh, agencies. And uh, uh, Mr. Lam also um, uh, point out that uh, there's uh, a need for the uh, easy using and the practical uh, studies and the researches on uh, to all the social economic data and also the other um, uh, forms of ecosystem services uh, in addition to uh, water uh, regulations and uh, conservations. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, now we have uh, delivered all these three presentations now. Thank you for all to our presenters, Dr. Barra, Professor Chemical and Mr. Lam. Now, it's time to move to the Q&A part, and um, I hand over to my uh, colleagues, Long. Long, over to you. Okay, uh, I didn't unmute my desk. Okay. 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 Yes. yes. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much Ansia, and yes, thank you very much for presenters. I am really much, very much enjoying your presentation, and then I also collect a lot of questions from the people sent here. Probably we may not be able to address all of them, but what I add is that um, all of the, the attendees, when you send a question, I already published the link for feedback. You can send the feedback and all the questions, you can put it there with your email address. We can uh, uh, send you respond to the email uh, with all of the answer in email. And the second one is also many uh, attendees want to have the presentation uh, from from uh, the presenters and also they said that it's some country from some place the powerpoint look very blurs they couldn't see very well and i said that okay you can send them um you can send us the feedback with your email there on the feedback link i i share it with you there and then we will share with you the presentation um, I think that it's it's that okay. We already discussed that we can share the presentation with uh, with you. Uh, presenter agree on that, and then we will also rebroadcast it in YouTube and in other channel from in by as well, so you can see it later. It will be clearer. So to become with the um, Q and A section, I think the first one. I think I would give some very quick answer question for. Uh, Dr. Uh, Himla Baro, that is some question is that 
is supporting service different from habitat service. What is common known in classification of uh, ES is a supporting service. Why do you need to use habitat service? This is uh, uh, Dr. Himla specialist. So uh, please, Dr. Himla. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Long and, and colleagues for, uh, for the questions. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a that's a different uh, classification uh, system. Actually, um, the first slide we saw we use a Millennium Ecosystem Assessment to to show the connection of uh, ecosystem services and human well-being. Uh, but for actual our framework, we use the TIB classification, the ecosystem, uh, the economics of ecosystem and biodiversity. Uh, which classified uh, provisioning, uh, regulating um, um, cultural and habitat services. So there is no supporting services there. So that's a um, that's a different way of classification. Uh, so in 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 the 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 framework we presented, there is no no supporting services. Okay. Yeah. Thank thank you, um, Dr. Himla. Um, the next one is yeah, we we have some more question for Dr. Himla first. And we can see that three presentations. The first one come from how to assess the ecosystem services. The next one applies the methodology to do it. And the third presenter see how they implement uh, the payment for ecosystem services in Vietnam. That all in sequence. And as we see that the concept of payment for ecosystem services is already coming quite a long time. But in the reality, implementation it's very low. I see that only few countries, Vietnam is one of the countries that implement very fast, pioneering countries there. And based on the experience and knowledge, Dr. Himla, do you think that it's how we could promote more to the, 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 the ecosystem, uh, payment for ecosystem service market? How we promote this market it quicker? Or what do you think when you conduct assessment of ecosystem service will help to promote the, the, the market. And then in your, uh, in your view, how is the perspective of payment for uh, ecosystem service market in the future? What are the challenges and what are the opportunities? Thank you. Thank you, Long. Uh, it's, a, it's a very 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 no. complicated <laughs> long yeah. and, and, yeah. and complicated um, questions there's no no very easy answer for this uh, this question but i will share my thoughts to you uh, so as um, as you you rightly pointed that uh, my presentation focused on mostly how to how to quantify and assess and the second present second presentation is actually applied this uh, this framework and uh, and applied in, um, in in Latin America, and uh, and the third we saw the payment mechanism. So first, uh, from my understanding, is if you want to go for payment, you need to know the buyer. There are two, two at least two parties: uh, buyer and seller, and regulator, like three parties, as, as I said. So, so the buyer need to know what they are paying for and seller need to know what they are selling or what they are offering to the buyer. So the quantification and assessment is the first step, in, in, in my opinion, the, this is the first step, the basic step for payment for ecosystem services. If you don't know what you are selling, any buyer doesn't know what they are buying, so it's, it's very hard for negotiation. So that's, a, that's the first, uh, the, the payment is, is a foundation, is assessment. And uh, yeah, I agree. This is uh, this has been uh, uh, it's, it's not uh, it has been here for a long time, but it's still uh, still uh, very slow. As Vietnam is one of the pioneer, and still uh, we saw the challenges there. So it's not a it's a, it's a new market, relatively new market. Uh, a lot of unknown, a lot of uncertainties, and it's still people's perception is this is free. So why should we pay? Like for example. If uh, someone is um, is uh, planting trees and protecting their uh, their landscapes, so the downstream communities are uh, getting those benefit uh, 
uh, without even paying. So if if someone like uh, say, oh no, I'm not going to pay. So it's very hard to hard to make them to pay. So it's a, for example, in Vietnam, we they have a regulated like government uh, initiative to for the payment for ecosystem services. But in 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 many cases, this is still voluntary. So that's why it's uh, it's, it's 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 getting slow. So, but uh, but but certain services are actually, for example, water is very very well known. So that is that has been practiced in Nepal, uh, in Vietnam, now in, here in Indonesia, in many parts of the world. But the carbon is relatively new, so slowly taking momentum. So unless we uh, the we got a crack carbon price. So when we got the carbon price and carbon pollution reduction scheme, the country the the carbon payment will uh, certainly take um, in place. Uh, but other services such as uh, ha uh, habitat services and biodiversity payments are uh, still in infancy. So, but um, there are some example in um, in in Australia they have a payment mechanism for biodiversity, but it's still ad hoc. Like this is based on the. Um, uh, only the state is the buyer and uh, the seller are um, um, are the many many sellers there and only one buyer so it's uh, it's, it's very difficult uh, except uh, uh, if you count about the park service uh, park entry service uh, uh, for using um, or uh, ecotourism certain ecotourism services so it takes time, but uh, but slowly we are um, so we are heading this uh, this direction, and many people and planner and policymaker are they are aware of these uh, ecosystem services concept. So so the future is bright, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Himla. And the next one, I have a question here. It also is from a colleague from different uh, and then it's give to uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Juan Carlos Camargo. As you already conduct uh, the assessment on the ground, you see how the challenges, you can see it there, especially for quantification of the, the, the uh, services. It's quite a lot of challenges, and I can see that it could also be a lot of data inconsistencies. For example, you compare it for it with the other for it. Maybe this data you have, carbon data you have from this forehead, but you don't have from either forehead, and you have all a divert on it. But it is a more practical indicator can be applied it for the payment for ecosystem services. Yeah, what according to you, what are the good information that can be used as a good indicator for payment for ecosystem services? Because it is easy to collect, not to complicate it, and it's reliable. It's rather good because that it, it, the people saying that this is a good indicator. We can collect it, and then it uh, it is uh, the, the, uh, uh, yeah it, it, it is good. Yeah, you can see the chain from ecosystem services. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lam, for your your questions. Um, okay, I think that uh, our work work, work focus and maybe with academic purpose. So we have to measure and to evaluate different methods and different approach in order to get the proper information. But maybe in the real life, it would be better if we have a, a concrete indicators and easy to to measure and to quantify because. Um, Sometimes it is not easy to have available information, but here we could demonstrate the value of, of bamboo and related to uh, other land uses. And, and of course, when we use the, the real value of indicators, we have some problems that you see, but because, because it is not easy to compare, so we have to find some alternative in order to put all the indicators in the same scale. So, I think this is an easy way uh, for making comparison among land uses and maybe to simplify the process to uh, assess ecosystem service. And OK, we need this information because for any of the standard or schemes or purposes to payment of ecosystem service, we need to demonstrate uh, what uh, ecosystem service we have. Like Himland said, and we have to know what 
kind of service we have in order to sell and to show the buyers the ecosystem service that we can offer and we can deliver uh, to the market. Yeah. Okay. Th th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Juan. But we do have some more questions for you all later. Now I come to the next question to uh, Mr. Lum. Um, hope you see me and you hear me, Lum. Yeah, based on your experience, because I see that you already saying a lot how you apply and you will see a lot of challenge also for the data and everything. Yeah. Um, based on your experience from Nghe An, yeah, do you think that when you apply the payments for ecosystem services, the forest management and protection will be enhanced better? And according to you, what is more important? Uh, what you said, how is it important to enhance the forest ecosystem services so it can benefit both the forest owner and the user as well? And do you think that it's possible to apply the result by payment for forest ecosystem services in your uh, area? And if you apply so, what are the challenges? So, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Uh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you for the questions. It's uh, quite tough to me, but uh, it's two questions, right? Yeah, it, uh, so the one. it, it is a number of questions in it. One, I think, yeah, if I make a shorter one, it um, uh, maybe it's quicker to make it one for you. So, maybe the first one is answer it. Can you apply payment, uh, result by payments for, for an ecosystem services? That means if I also you now you pay per forest units, I also have one hectare forest. Someone else also have one hectare forest, but my forest I put it better. I should get more money than the neighbor. Can you apply that? If you apply that, what is the challenges? What engine? What you need to be done? What need to be done? Yeah. Okay. If you can apply the resolve it, the fully resolve it uh, payment, that will be very good. So it make more uh, like uh, equities uh, in payment. But uh, at the moment, we do try to apply the resolve based payment, mm. but uh, yeah. half resolve it, not okay. full <laughs> resolve okay. based. Because yeah. the payment now is not a uh, that's uh, after we get the money from the uh, from the company, they we do not pay directly to the uh, forest owner, but have to base on the uh, some monitoring and checks, and then that will approve uh, that proves the uh, protection uh, and conservation of the forest owner make the uh, keep a good quality of forest and that can provide the services and then we, we pay it. But because uh, now we mainly based on the qualitative uh, quantitative uh, survey, uh, quantitative checks, so that we call hub uh, oh. resolve weights. Okay. As you mentioned, if we can pay, um, uh, we have more study on uh, more clearly that the quality of the forest, right? And then we can have different level of payments. So that will be very good. But that win takes a lot of time and we need, um, I think, a lot of labor and uh, win cost very high at the moment. So we cannot do it now. But we hope in future we can do that. Uh, if every year we have annually, we have to re yeah, uh, uh, study and study again about the quality of the forest. I think, <laughs> I don't know yeah. how about this, uh, Professor Juan and <laughs> Dr. Harbour can answer more for me about this because I I don't do the the very scientific study. I do some like practical studies uh, only. So uh, I think I uh, it's very good to do that, but at the moment we cannot do that. Uh, okay, yeah. I think the transaction, transaction cost will be very high. Yeah, uh, that's the uh, challenge. So, but uh, it, it, it's yeah. shall I, based on your practical point, can be any yeah. few, can be any very simple uh, indicator can be applied it 
for for uh, for example number yeah. of tree or number or or, or yeah. canopy the, cover or whatever moment, you can recommend yeah. yeah at the moment we use a k factor the k yeah. factor including uh, some uh, uh, different uh, indicators uh, like uh, the uh, the type of uh, the forest like natural forest different uh, to the plantation forest it depends on the quality of the forest it depend, mm -hmm. uh, in vietnam we uh, uh, categorize the forest into different quality like 1a 1b to 1 to b uh, and uh, and and uh, um, etc so based on that we have different uh, level of payment and okay. also we uh, the the uh, other k factor it's about the difficulty of protection uh, so some for it is easier to to protect and some other stand it it's it, it take more labor uh, to or, or is a it's very it's very sensitive to protect so we have to pay more or something like that so okay. at the moment we try to apply that but actually yeah. in the calculation it's very very complicated yeah. it's a I, and, and easy to and uh, and also we try to make it transparent, but sometimes the forest owner in the remote area, they don't know what happened to their money, to their money. why this household is this level, why are the households different levels? So sometimes they, they argue huh? and, yeah. and they have a, a bad feedback. OK, yeah, thank, thank you. Lam. Now the uh, next question to Johan. Uh, so you have a uh, next question for, for um, Dr. Uh, for Professor Juan. Juan. Uh, you will be there for the next one again. We just keep on by turn. Okay. Question, sorry. <laughs> uh, Johan, you conduct and then you uh, uh, assess, assess, after your assessment, you identify number of very uh, high eco, uh, high valuable ecosystem services from bamboo forest and then from other one. Um, this, this study is also could be used as a result to recommend local uh, government or uh, our decision maker, how could we do, uh, enhance the, some very important value for the reason? What you could recommend on that or not? Do uh, you have, have my my point? Yes, 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 Lon. Thank you. Okay. Um, it, w one of the more important things that finally the governments made decisions about the incentive for example, for owners. Mm. So we have to try, we have the academic results and we have the support of, the, of, of this uh, data and, and we can demonstrate that. But now we have to work in a simple way to show the governments uh, about the, the possibilities of uh, in, enhance the importance of this uh, forest and also to support, for example, owners in order to get the promotion of, of bamboo um, because it is interesting the recognition of, of service provided by bamboo and other forests. But in, in the case of Colombia, it is also important to see the context because it, we have a, a large areas with a tropical forest in the Amazonian. And sometimes in the mountains area, we have small areas with forests, especially in the range of distribution of bamboo. So maybe it will be easier for uh, the governments uh, try to focus uh, according to the context, to the ecological context, at consider some difference according to this ecological condition, because sometimes bamboo forests tend to be uh, for, forgotten because there are no very large areas, big areas, and are reduced to small areas on the mountains. So we have to remark this, and of course to work um, on on ways to simplify the the um, information to governments in order to make decision to um, create incentives to owners uh, or to farmers that are the uh, owners of this uh, bamboo forest. OK, thank, uh, thank you very much. Man. I think it's um, Lum and Alum is there. Both uh, Himla is still uh, not appears yet. OK, thank you. I, I, I will have just one more question. I think that we already run a bit over time, but still would like to have another final question for you. Why is that one? 
um, which is the case and then um, uh, from how they apply in Vietnam. Uh, but it not many other countries that do not they are yet to apply payment for ecosystem services. What would you recommend the country to do in order to promote the payment for ecosystem services in the future? Because not many countries apply that at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Not also a very easy question, actually. Uh, yeah, based on um, based on uh, my experience in uh, in this region, actually is South and and Southeast Asia. So it's so slowly increasing the this, this payment mechanism awareness is increasing, but slower than um, than expected. Um, uh, the post. Uh, First important thing is uh, the awareness uh, need to be raised uh, among the practitioner from uh, from policy maker, decision maker, uh, and also ecosystem service uh, practitioner, so that um, um, it will um, it will slowly go to in in the planning process. Uh, the other is more about uh, private sector. For example, in um, in Indonesia. Uh, a lot of like, uh, for example, water uh, um, authorities, uh, they are paying for uh, ecosystem services, which is uh, somehow related to Vietnam case, um, as you asked uh, about result based payments. So uh, they, they set a minimum criteria, X number of trees, for example, 400 minimum 400 trees per hectare uh, with um, with 80 percent survival rate. So minimum uh, like those kind of uh, Feature, but uh, it's very hard to see the exact uh, the, the quality of like my forest and your forest. It's it's it's, uh, it's not that easy, um, and but uh, it's it's a slowly happening. The process is um, is, um, is is taking momentum. Um, the yeah, I think uh, the recognition, uh, the requirement uh, of services. Uh, yeah, buyers' interest, uh, sellers' interest. There are uh, multiple factors, uh, so um, uh, so there is no no hard and fast rule to recommendation. How okay you this is the this is the formula or this is the technology. So you should increase the payment of ecosystem service. I don't think that uh, that is uh, available. Okay, thank yeah. you. Hi, thank you very much, Himla. I think it's just same question. If uh, um, uh, the, the Dr. Swan or Professor Kwan Swan and Lum, do you have any other um, suggestion or recommendation for the government or for the, the decision maker local uh, community how we could promote the payment for ecosystem services so it can implement it as more as possible? According to my uh, point of view, I think uh we need more scientific study uh, in order to find out more uh, services or uh, sellable or something like uh, uh, charitable uh, mm -hmm. values of forest uh, and we need to find out more forest environment uh, users in order to ask them to pay back money for the forest owner based on scientific uh, study result, uh, not only based on the administration rule, something like that. Uh, 